4.3.4 Electrolysis of Aqueous Solutions You're becoming an expert on electrolysis now, you understand the process, you understand oil rig and panic and you understand the extraction of aluminium. So now we're going to look at electrolysis of aqueous solutions. Now for these we often need an inert electrode. An inert electron is one that's unreactive, so for instance platinum. Now platinum is a very expensive metal um, so you only need a thin layer of platinum to act as your electrode and it will wear away over time but it doesn't react with the ions that are in solution so that's why we can use it. It's also a metal so therefore it's, it's a very good conductor of electricity. In electrolysis the ions discharged depend on a few things obviously they depend on the solution that you've used but also depends on the relative reactivity of the ions in solution. So there's a few rules you need to know. The first rule, the rules of the anode. At the anode, negative ions are attracted to the anode. Electrons are lost at the anode. Oxidation takes place at the anode. And oxygen forms at the anode unless, and this is the rule, unless the solution contains halide ions. So fluoride ions, chloride ions, bromide ions, iodide ions. If those ions are present then the halogen will form fluorine, chlorine, bromine or iodine. If not then oxygen forms. At the cathode positive ions are attracted, electrons are gained, reduction takes place and the metal atoms form unless, this is the rule that you need to remember, unless the metal is more reactive than hydrogen. If the metal is more reactive than hydrogen, then hydrogen forms. If the metal is less reactive than hydrogen, then the metal atoms form. So what happens in aqueous solutions? Well, water molecules break down and they produce H plus ions, hydrogen ions, and OH minus ions, hydroxide ions. And it's these ions that are discharged. So why do we get hydrogen at the cathode if the metal is more reactive than hydrogen? It's because the H plus ions in solution are discharged. Why do we get oxygen at the anode if there's no halide present? Well it's the oxide ions in the OH minus that are discharged. So let's look at a common example, in fact you must know this, it comes up again and again. Electrolysis of brine, sodium chloride, NaCl. In this electrolysis you have H plus ions, Na plus ions, Cl minus ions and OH minus ions in solution. All those ions are present. You need to know at the end of this process the products are hydrogen, H2, chlorine, Cl2 and sodium hydroxide, NaOH. You also need to know that they all have some really, really good commercial uses. Hydrogen is a great fuel because it doesn't produce carbon dioxide. Chlorine is used in water treatment because it kills microbes and bacteria and also used in plastic formations. And sodium hydroxide is used to make soaps and bleaches just like chlorine. So make sure you know that all the products of this electrolysis are really, really good for selling. They're very, very commercial. Therefore, it's economic, this process. What's going on? Well, at the anode, the chloride ions and the hydroxide ions are, will attract. But as we've said already, chlorine is discharged because chlorides are halide ions. And if they're halide ions, then they form instead of oxygen. Just remember when you write Cl2 that it's a subscript to half equations. Can you see this one? We have two chloride ions which are losing two electrons because it's oxidized and it forms chlorine gas Cl2. We call that a diatomic molecule. Practice those. There's only so many they can ask you. So if you practice those half equations, you'll get them right. At the cathode, the sodium ions Na plus and that acid H plus ions are attracted. Again, make sure those positive charges are superscript at the top um, so you get the marks right in the exam, unlike on here. 
Hydrogen is therefore discharged as the sodium ions are more reactive than the hydrogen ions. So the half equation is two H plus ions react with gain two electrons, reduction is gain of electrons, and form H2, a diatomic molecule of hydrogen. Electrolysis is a great topic because it includes loads and loads and loads of science. You've got things about graphite being a good conductor. You've got the things about molecules in there. You've got the idea about metals being conducting. You've got ions. And you've also got the explanation of the products of these reactions. Just practice, practice, practice. Watch this video again and again and again until you've got it.